Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Teochian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, January 22nd, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Timothy, my son, I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience, as did my fathers, when I remember you constantly in my prayers. As I remember your tears, I long night and day to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure it dwells in you. Hence, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. Do not be ashamed, then, of testifying to our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel in the power of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, verses 37 through 38 and chapter 19, verses 27 through 30. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Then Peter said in reply, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. What then shall we have? Jesus said to them, Truly, I say to you in the new world, when the Son of Man shall sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold, and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last, and the last first. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. I have spoken before about this gospel reading, that it's a very hard saying for us to apprehend because of just how different it sounds from what we hear in a cliched form in general public about the relationship between Christianity and our families, about you know, faith and country and family and apple pie and Chevrolet. It runs right over those kinds of cliches. So let me put it a different way. I've said this before also, and I don't mean it lightly, but God is a jealous God. He loves us, and he's all merciful and all forgiving. Yes, these things are absolutely true. But he's also a smasher of idols. He's very impatient, impatient with idols, with anything that gets put before him. Our number one job is to worship God in spirit and in truth, because God is the source of all beauty, of all truth, of all that is good. And so if the one who has all of those things and is the source of all of those things, then we can't look and say, well, family is the source of all things good. Family is all things beautiful and true. No, it's not that way at all. So sometimes family gets in the way. Sometimes family works against the faith. And then what do you do? Now, let's be a little bit more drastic about it. Now, there are subtle ways that family gets in the way of, in society today. Sometimes not so subtle, but most of the time subtle. But think about ancient Rome. Or think about Russia in the time of communism. And there are other times. The times when mother and father would sell out their child in hopes the government would smile on them, would be nicer to them, would give them things, or maybe remove some obstacle or some threat from their lives. In Rome, 
families would turn in their kids to the Roman authorities or to the local authorities, and those kids would be put to death. Sometimes the kids would turn in their parents, for whatever reason. So no, family is not the central focus, and you can't say God and family as if they're the same thing, because they absolutely are not. And so when we hear that, then we understand what Christ is saying. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. These are very dangerous things. Yes, you can love father and mother. Yes, you can love son and daughter in a way that brings out the reality of the beauty of God in that subordinate kind of a way. That the love of son or daughter is a way through allegory to learn how to love God with that ferocity, that sincerity that is meant for God to be loved. But if we stop short of loving God because we're loving family, it's no good. And then he says, he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And we're not just talking about a cross around the neck, a piece of jewelry, or a sticker on a car. It's not enough to say through some kind of token that we're Christians. People have to recognize through our actions, through the fruits that we bear, that we are indeed the ones who follow after Christ. And in fact, if Christ himself was willing to empty himself and take on the form of a servant and allow himself to be beaten and scourged and mutilated, and ultimately crucified and killed, then who are we to do anything otherwise? Who are we not to take up our own crosses and follow? The life of a Christian is not the life of roses and fairy tales the majority of the time. It's still the most beautiful thing that the world can understand. But it does not mean that it will be without sorrow, without hardship, without loss of friends, without loss of popularity, maybe property, certainly loss of security. None of these things are things that would be held if we follow Christ. And if we value those things more than we value Christ, then what have we done but allowed an idol to take the place of the one who truly loves us, Christ himself. So we understand in this particular reading that there indeed is a cost to discipleship. Oftentimes what it really means is the shedding of our very own blood, or at least our willingness to have it shed. It does not mean that every Christian has to be a martyr, but it also means that if we do become one, we should not be resentful or angry with God because somehow he's let us down. No, he doesn't promise us peace and freedom except in Christ. The peace is the peace that passes all understanding that is found where? In God's heavenly kingdom. And the freedom? Same thing. It is a freedom to worship freely with all holds barred. And as soon as we have that, then we have eternal bliss. This is our goal. And family and other things can point us towards that goal, but they themselves are not the goal in and of themselves. A hard lesson to learn, but the sooner we learn it, the more peaceful our lives will become. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider giving it a like. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're so interested. In the meantime, may God bless you and everyone that you love. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.